Okay, in this video we're going to talk about carbocation rearrangements and oxymercuration. So, if we remember from chapter 6, carbocations can rearrange. And it will typically do this if we can switch from a less stable primary or secondary carbocation to a more stable tertiary carbocation. So, if we think about um, hydrohalogenation, when the pi bond attacks the hydrogen, that forms a carbocation. And in this case, it forms a secondary carbocation, right? And so if I have a hydride shift where one of the hydrogens on this neighboring carbon moves over, that moves the tertiary carbocation, or that moves the carbocation so that it becomes tertiary. And then if, when the chloride comes in and attacks the carbocation, right, we get the chlorine in a different position than we might have expected to begin with. So let's do an example of that. We want to draw the mechanism for the following reaction, right? So normally we would have expected the bromine to add here, um, but in fact it's added here. So we probably had a carbocation rearrangement. So my first step Is going to be the pi bond attacking the hydrogen. Right, and the hydrogen is going to add to this carbon, and I'm going to leave out drawing the hydrogen, and so the carbocation is going to go here. Right, and now this carbon only has three bonds showing, so there must be a hydrogen on there. So if that hydrogen moves over in a hydride shift, then that produces this tertiary carbocation. And so now when my bromide comes in and does the nucleophilic attack, it will add here. So one of the problems is when carbocation rearrangements can occur, they do occur. And so if I start with this reactant and I try to do acid catalyzed hydration, I'm going to get a mixture of products. And if I was trying to produce this alcohol, then this is actually a problem. And so we would like a way to have regio specific um, addition reactions, right? Where when I have these carbocation intermediates, I don't get rearrangement. And so one way to do that is to use a process called oxymercuration demercuration. So this process results in Markovnikov addition and no arrangements occur. And so let's take a look at um, this process. So if we start with mercuric acetate, this can actually dissociate into the mercuric cation, which is going to be our active reagent in this oxymercuration demercuration process. And just a note on the shorthand, this OAC is this guy here. Okay, so in an acid catalyzed hydration, we end up with carbocation intermediates, and these will rearrange if they can. In contrast, when we have this oxymercuration demercuration, so the pi bond attacks the mercury in this case, but then we actually get a resonance structure in the product that's formed where the lone pair on this mercury actually forms a bond with this carbocation, right? And so we get this sort of bridged intermediate. And so the presence of this bridged intermediate prevents the carbocation from rearranging. Now, this mercurinium ion is still very reactive with nucleophiles, and so it can easily be attacked by a nucleophile. So if we bring any nucleophile in, right, it will then disrupt this mercury-carbon bond and result in this product. And then to get rid of this HGOAC, 
um, we can use a variety of different reagents. Uh, NaBH4 is a common one. When we react, react this compound with NaBH4, it replaces this uh, mercuric cation with a hydrogen. All right, so if I had this as my starting material, if I tried to use acid catalyzed hydration, I would get a mixture of these two products, right? We're going to form a secondary carbocation. If the water attacks there, I'll get this product. But when I have the secondary carbocation, if I have a methyl or a hydride shift, right, I can move the carbocation here, and so I can get this product. However, if instead I use the oxymercuration demercuration, then I only get uh, the product without any rearrangement. Okay, so just one final example. So we want to know the products of this reaction if we used, uh, and in this case, we're using oxymercuration demercuration. So I should only get the one product. Where the OH adds here. However, if I'd done this reaction with acid catalyzed hydration, then when we form this secondary carbocation, I can get a methyl shift where one of the methyl groups moves over, resulting in a tertiary carbocation, and then the OH would add there. And so we would get a mixture of this product. So we get a methyl shift, and then we could also have the OH adding here.